Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, I'm going to be covering doing pattern tessellations using geometry nodes. To get started, let's go ahead and clear out this scene. I'll go into top view. I'm going to add a plane in, and this is going to be what we use to lay out our pattern. For our first object, I'm going to use a cube. Now I'm going to bring up this area and turn it into a geometry nodes. Going to my plane, I'm going to go ahead and add a new geometry nodes tree. And I'm going to add a points instance node and point it to my cube. One of the things you'll notice with geometry nodes is that you definitely want to apply your scale when you're working with them. I'm going to shrink this cube down just a little bit so we can see what we've got. All right, that looks good to start. I'm going to jump over to the modifiers tab and see here. I'm going to shut off the geometry nodes tree and I'm going to add an array modifier. This array modifier will duplicate my plane to the, to the right here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I set merge to on. Now I'm going to duplicate this array. And instead of duplicating in the X direction, I'm going to duplicate in the Y direction. If I re-enable my geometry nodes tree, you'll see that this pattern is duplicating. And I can use the array counts here to add size. Next, we want to do a slightly more complicated version. So I'm going to add in my plane. And this time, I'm going to add in a hexagon shape using a cylinder. So make sure when you add your cylinder to set the vertices to six. Now, if I add my node tree, add a point instance, and set it to my hexagon, you'll see I have this, which isn't what we're looking for. I'm going to take my hexagon and rotate it. It's still not quite right. I'm going to shrink it, and then edit my plane. Now that I have this object set up, I'm going to go ahead and add my array modifier. This time, I'm going to use a constant offset instead of a relative offset. We need to make sure the array is before the geometry nodes. Now I'll shift this over until it's in the right spot. I'll collapse this array and then duplicate it changing the second one to go on the y-axis instead of the x-axis. Again, like before, I can use my array counts to change the size of my tessellation. Finally, I want to do a slightly more complicated one, this time using octagons. Again, I'm going to add my plane as my control mesh and add a geometry nodes to it. I'm going to add a cylinder and set it to eight vertices this time. Rotate this to 22 and a half degrees. I'll add my point instance node. As before, I can come in and scale these octagons till they're the size that I want. One issue with octagons is that they don't tessellate perfectly, and we need a square in the middle to complete this. So that means we need a point in the middle of this object. I'm going to shut off my geometry node so I can look at my original mesh. We want a point right in the center. We could add cuts this way, but that doesn't give us what we want because that would add additional points to the outside. Instead, we want to use an option called Poke Faces. With this face selected, we hit Poke Faces, and it adds a point right to the middle. 
Now if I turn my geometry nodes back on, you'll notice that it puts this octagon right in the center, and that isn't what we want either. What we want is a square. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add a cube. And now we want to set this center point to use a different object than the others. One way I've found to do that is with weight painting. If I come to my original object, I go to my object data properties and add a vertex group. I'm going to select this center point, make sure my weight is on one and hit assign. Do a control I to invert, set this to zero and assign. Now if I go into weight paint mode, you'll see that the center vertex is weight one, the outside vertices are weight zero. We're going to use this as a map to determine which objects get instanced on this geometry nodes tree. So back in object mode, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to add a point separate node. Duplicating the point instance node, I will point the second one to the cube. Then I'll add a geometry join geometry node and hook it back up this way. Now with geometry nodes, we can use vertex groups as a mask. One thing to note is that a mask field requires a zero value for off and any other value for on. So now that we've set this up, I'll go ahead and turn the geometry nodes back on. Come in, shrink this cube down. You'll notice that the rotation is wrong, so we'll rotate this 45 degrees and scale it to the proper size. So this is the pattern that we want to tessellate. So to do that, we'll go ahead and add our array modifiers. Again, using a constant offset. and putting it above the geometry node tree, we can move it into position. We want to turn on merge and make sure it's in the right position. We'll duplicate this and then use the Y direction. Again, making sure that we line up correctly. And now we have our tessellated octagons and cubes. You can of course edit these objects here to be the size you want, or you could go in and add something like a bevel modifier. to get the effect that you want. So I hope this is helpful in giving you some ideas of some ways you can tessellate objects using geometry nodes. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit like or subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Johnny Gizmo. Thanks for watching.